give the court jurisdiction over Glendora. Now, Avaricious National Association of Realtors member, emblazoned Natalia, is trying to get out of Glendora $2,000. All of her claims are phony, unproven, unstantiated, unwitnessed, conclusory. The judge who was set up to get a third of it, under information and belief, signed a judgment. Judgment is potentially a nullity, and Glendora has proven so in 500 pages to the Court of Appeals. Glendora has told Natalia's chronology on approximately 15 half-hour TV shows. Does this association want to hear the remaining claims against Natalia? Glendora sued nasty Natalia and bully Judge Dixon and his wife, clerk of the court, and lawyer for hire James Kleinbaum in Chatham Village in your municipality, Chicago, United States District Court for the violation of Glendora's civil rights under Title 42 U.S. Code Section 1983 and Section 1985, Conspiracy. Paragraph uh, 29 is reserved. This is Opus 1,153 hours, $3. It's dated June 2nd, 2004, Anno Domini, State of New York, Without Prejudice, Uniform Commercial Code, Volume 1, Section 207. And it's Glendora, Chat with Glendora on 43 TV stations, including Washington, D.C. it used to be, you'd wake up, there wouldn't be any clouds, and the sun could shine upon us. This is the way mornings used to be. Isn't that nice? Now we're going on a long trip. And it's all because of cable vision. And let's see, what can we do to rejoice at 8.15? And joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth regain his peace. blessing. Fill our hearts with peace and joy. Let us each thy love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us, oh, refresh us, traveling through this wilderness. taking four animals away in terror and pain in agony to be tortured and slaughtered.
and they didn't do anything wrong. God, rebuild these people, rebuild these people, remake these people. Stop this cruelty to animals.
last perfect breath one pure thought, the embodiment of your perfection is beautiful, eternal, perfect. Eleven.
that we can make people perfect. Make people perfect. End the cruelty and end the injustice.
Hey folks, isn't beating over the hills, isn't beating something old fashioned that nobody does anymore? No, you must be joking. No, really, is it popular? Go in your local yeah. bookstore, there are all these beating magazines. Oh yeah. The craft stores like AC Moore, the beating sections are expanding. You mean it isn't dead, huh? No, never was dead. Never was dead. Never was dead. And uh, why do people do it? Because it's relaxing? It's relaxing. They can be creative and make their own jewelry. It's beautiful. Oh, for gifts. Oh, they, you yeah. A lot. For gifts, right. Do you have classes in beading? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. How long have you had your shop? did you get into it? Uh, I've been playing with beads since I was 10 years old. Oh, okay. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful that you yeah. made a hobby into a career? Yeah. It's very addictive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, relative, it's a good addiction. <laughs> relative to other bead stores in the area. I didn't know there, there were any. any. There yeah. aren't craft stores. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Of a collection of what? Of what? Sea beads, the little beads, Japanese. Oh, sea beads? Yeah, they're like all exactly the same, so you make something and it's very even. Oh, that's the Japanese things? Japanese beads? sea beads. Yeah? yeah? Most of those, yeah. Let me go see these. These are cute little tables and little boxes that you have. Oh, thanks. Oh, these are the sea beads? Yep, and the tubes, yep. How do you spell that? S-E-E-D. Oh. Seeds. Like a seed. Are they seeds? No, they're glass. They're glass. Boy, how do they make glass so small? That's a good question. <laughs> well, they're very clever, those people. Folks, I'd like to have you meet Joanne Groon. Uh, tell us, Joanne, is there a resurgence in beating? Uh, yes, there is. Um, thousands and thousands of women have rediscovered the art and the science of beating. And I've been doing it now for about 25 years, and there are constantly <laughs> new techniques emerging, new kinds of semi-precious stones, new types of facets. It's a hobby that you never get tired of. You can make very, very beautiful things at a fraction of the cost. Oh! And there's also a great deal to learn about beads themselves, African beads, Asian beads, Japanese beads. And then you have the findings, which are usually gold, silver, or gunmetal that you use. What do you call them? Findings. What's that? It's the small hardware on an earring, for example. Oh, like I see. Little things you use to hook oh. together. Oh, okay. And uh, we also have many of these developing. But I want to say that right now I'm standing in the finest bead store in Westchester County. And I particularly like coming here because of the selection of seed beads, because of individual glass beads you can buy, and then also you can buy individual semi-precious stones. And it really makes composing a new item, a new necklace or pair of earrings or anklet or bracelet, very, um, very exciting because you can sit in the back and put everything together. Yes. And also you have to add to that the creative aspect of it. And the fact that you're giving something to somebody who's homemade, it's homemade. Right. Um, I've taught beading. And oh, you have? What's so exciting is that people will say, I can't possibly do this. Mm -hmm. And then they try, and they create such beautiful things which they can give as gifts or wear them wear themselves. And it's such a feeling of satisfaction to discover how creative you really can be. And you can learn and develop over time and create your own unique style. Mm. So it's something I love. Uh, people say there's a bead mania, and certainly it's grabbed hold of me. <laughs> so there have there been many TV shows on beading, has there? No, and in a way it's very surprising given how popular beading is. Yeah, well, good, that's good. Then but I, I think there would definitely be an audience for bead shows in the mass media, most certainly. Yeah. We have more and more magazines and books, but very little on television. 
Well, this is right. This is what a chat with Glendora does. The things I that you don't usually see, we put Glendora, on TV. Glendora, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's a real public service to so many of us. And you can watch this on Cablevision Peekskill. Okay, good. Yeah, I think my program's on 9 p.m. Saturdays. Good, 9 p.m. Saturdays. Yes, and I think it's Channel 18. I'm going to look out for it. If Cablevision doesn't change it in two days. Okay, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Thank you. You see what Charles Doan has reduced public access to in Peekskill? This used to be a thriving public access center. Just the way Yorktown used to be. Just the way Ossining used to be. And he shut them all down. This is all that's left. Isn't it pathetic? This is cable vision Peekskill. Isn't it awful? We're over here getting signers to give Cecilia some more extortion to do. But one good thing is, I got a chance to feed the squirrel some of my pizza. You want more squirrel? Yeah, I'll eat with that great big piece. Goodbye, Peekskill Cable Vision. You violated my First Amendment free speech for a half a year now. And the public's First Amendment right to know. That you folks, you're the public. And Cecilia doesn't know how to talk to you on the phone or write your letters. We have three fast reports for you today. This is Applebee's, a cup of soup, uh, onion, French onion soup. Here it is. Would you believe it? $2.70. Now that's an out and out ripoff. I'll try to find $4 to send Two tenants and neighbors, a tenants organization that's out to protect your rights. Tuesday, June 15th and Thursday, June 17th, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. and 4.30 p.m. demonstration. This is, this is the Rent Guidelines Board. Uh, they want a freeze, a freeze on the rents instead of the rents going up 7.5%. You want your rent to go up 7.5%. Okay. Hundreds of tenants pick a... Uh, picket Speaker Silver, tenants rally at the Rent Guidelines Board meeting to man a de rent fee. So we need a rent freeze. Okay, this is Tenants and Neighbors, a nonprofit organization. And let me give you their address. 105 Washington Street, floor 2, New York, New York. Uh, next news. From Washington, D.C., received by Glendora on June the 1st. A memo endorsed by Glendora on June the 6th. D-Day, United States Court of Appeals, District of Columbia, uh, Circuit. Uh, Glendora, <laughs> you still can't get the right address. <laughs> what a bunch of dummies. Uh, I'm writing in response to your letter concerning the validity of the court's order. The lack of a judge's signature does not affect the validity of the court's order. CDC uh, Circuit Rule 1A3 orders must be signed by a judge or judges of the court or by the clerk at the direction of the court. Emphasis added. Sincerely, Nancy G. Dunn, Deputy Special Counsel. See, they had her do it because they knew whoever did this was going to get sued. So they put it down to the bottom rung. Glendora says, this is mere dictum. Your problem is you have never read the Constitution. Glendora is saying so on 43 TV stations. June the 6th, the year 2004 D-Day, uh, Article 3. Uh, Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States entitles Gundor to a federal judge. The paper signed by suffragans 
or adjuncts is a nullity. There is no order, quote unquote. You think your local rules supersede the U.S. Constitution? This is dull, obtuse, and stupid. And when will you ever intercept a simple address change uh, dated June the 6th, D-Day? And uh, it went to Orrin Hatch and to Ginsburg, who's the chief judge, and to George Bur uh, Bush, and to Orrin Hatch, and to the House Judiciary, and to the Center for Judicial Accountability, and Incorporated, and to you folks, you, Glendora TV audience. It went to McDermott, and it went to who to sue. Why do you need three copies for who to sue? You need one for the court. Uh, you need a second one in case the record is too lazy to make their own copy. So you might need two copies for the court. And then you need one for the uh, Glendora to have a record of what she sent. This is the scene out of my back door. The nursery school teacher took the children for a walk and she says, at least, children, there is one thing for which we all can be frank, thankful. We are all free. And a little four-year-old says, I am not free. I am four. And the three teenagers ask their mother and father, what do you want as presents for your 20th anniversary? And the mother and father answered, our own telephone. Harry went to the doctor, and the doctor says, you mustn't mow the lawn. You'll have a heart attack. You're middle-aged. Harry went home, and he said, son, would you please mow the lawn? His son said, yes, Dad. I'll start immediately. Well, that gave Harry a heart attack. Bobby came home with all A's on his report card. His father says he must get his intelligence from me. His mother said he must. I still have mine. From Washington, D.C., received by Glendora on June the 1st, a memo endorsed by Glendora on June the 6th, D-Day, United States Court of Appeals, District of Columbia, uh, Circuit, uh, Glendora, <laughs> still can't get the right address, what a bunch of dummies, 
Uh, I'm writing in response to your letter concerning the validity of the court's order. The lack of a judge's signature does not affect the validity of the court's order. CDC uh, Circuit Rule 1A3 orders must be signed by a judge or judges of the court or by the clerk at the direction of the court. Emphasis added. Sincerely, Nancy G. Dunn, Deputy Special Counsel. See, they had her do it because they knew whoever did this was going to get sued. So they put it down to the bottom rung. Glendora says, this is mere dictum. Your problem is you have never read the Constitution. Glendora is saying so on 43 TV stations. June the 6th, the year 2004 DT, uh, D-Day, Article 3. Uh, Article 3 of the Constitution of the United States entitles Gondor to a federal judge. The paper signed by suffragans or adjuncts is a nullity. There is no order, quote unquote. You think your local rules supersede the U.S. Constitution? This is dull, obtuse, and stupid. And when will you ever intercept a simple address change uh, dated June the 6th, D-Day? And uh, it went to Orrin Hatch and to Ginsburg, who's the chief judge, and to George Bur uh, Bush, and to Orrin Hatch, and to the House Judiciary, and to the Center for Judicial Accountability, and Incorporated, and to you folks, you, Glendora TV audience. It went to McDermott, and it went to who to sue. Why do you need three copies for who to sue? You need one for the court. Uh, you need a second one in case the court is too lazy to make their own copy. So you might need two copies for the court. And then you need one for the uh, Glendora to have a record of what she sent. This is the scene out of my back door. The nursery school teacher took the children for a walk and she says, at least, children, there is one thing for which we all can be frank, thankful. We are all free. And a little four-year-old says, I am not free. I am four. And the three teenagers ask their mother and father, what do you want as presents for your 20th anniversary? And the mother and father answered, our own telephone. Harry went to the doctor, and the doctor says, you mustn't mow the lawn. You'll have a heart attack. You're middle-aged. Harry went home, and he said, son, would you please mow the lawn? His son said, yes, Dad. I'll start immediately. Well, that gave Harry a heart attack. Bobby came home with all A's on his report card. His father says he must get his intelligence from me. His mother said he must. I still have mine. Earthquakes were reported to be on their way. And so Sydney and Sylvia sent their young son deep into the inner country so he'd be safe with an uncle. They soon got a telegram from the uncle saying, I'm returning the boy. Send the earthquake. And little Johnny was in the department store watching me going down the escalator, and he said to his little friend, what happens when the basement gets filled up with steps? You heard about the couple who had identical twin girls? What did they name them? Kate and Duplicate. The lawyer says it gives me a grand and glorious feeling to dispense legal advice. Client said, right, give him a grand and he feels glorious. Two cars collided. A third car pulled up. A man got out. He said, I saw the whole thing happen. I'm a lawyer. I'll take either side. And for heaven's sakes, if you can't get a lawyer who knows the law, then get one who knows the judge.
It rained so hard, folks, that uh, water came through the uh, trunk lid of the 1993 Lincoln. But I think we got it dried out. This is something, and this is the second day. We've had two days of summer. Isn't that lovely? Here's seven words I'm trying to learn. The main word is acute. Let's see if I can say what it means, the seven words. One, perceiving. Two, keen. Three, shrewd. Four, quick-witted. Five, discerning. Six, perspicacious. Seven, what's the seventh one? The antonym is dull, obtuse, and stupid. Now what's the seventh one? Did you know that geranium seed? Yes, they do. I'm going to show it to you. I have never seen, I've had these geraniums for years. I have never seen them seed, but they do. See that? They seed. Now this plant is seeding, and this one hasn't. And this is Charlie Brown, I hope he survives. Yesterday, it took 11 hours and, uh, let's see, 80 from 250 is 170 miles to try to undo the harm that Charles Dolan, well, obtuse, dull and stupid Charles Dolan is doing to public access getting signers in Harrison, and getting signers in uh, Pigskill. But it was kind of interesting, these foolish hoops that he makes public access producers jump through. You have to say you meet interesting people doing it. the MCI bill. Now, look at this. All these long distance charges. See that? They're all zero. Let me give you some more. This whole page. Okay? It's all zero. Page whatever. All zero. MCI says I talk a lot. 2,000 minutes a month, I think they said, or was it 4,000? But look at this. White Plains, New York, 421, 1200. Uh, 28 minutes, zero. Or Brookville, New York, 516, 28 minutes, zero. Syracuse, New York, 13 minutes, zero. Uh, Bronx, New York, 15 minutes, zero. Huntington, New York, 11 minutes, zero. Uh, Gardner, Maine, uh, 36 minutes, zero. Now, I think you should have a telephone bill like this. See that? All that talking, and it's zero. See, I was upset because I couldn't get MCI neighborhood up here. Because where I live, it's too small. And they gave me something better. $25 a month. I can call anywhere I want, talk as long as I want, talk as often as I want. I mean, it's still going to be $25. 
Yeah? Total long distance, zero. International long distance. I don't have any international long distance. Winnipeg, Maine. I don't know anybody in Winnipeg, Maine. I don't know. Shall I call up and tell them to take that off? Because I don't know anybody in Winnipeg, New Brunswick. Or what is that MB? I just don't know anybody there. And then here's all the taxes. So if I ask them to take that off, they don't tell you the number of minutes. They used to tell you the number of minutes. But if I ask them to take that off, then that would be about two dollars and a half off. And the total bill would be something like uh, My goodness, if you'd like $28, shall I ask him? Okay. But isn't that something? All right, what is this called? I don't know what it's called. It's a national something, and it's MCI. And I think you should get it. And the telephone number for MCI is 1-800-444-3333. Call them up and tell them you want it. I don't know anything that beats that. You can talk as long as you want, wherever you want, and how often you want, and it's still $25. It's even better than the neighborhood network. So I called MCI, and they had this international number, and I don't know anybody internationally, see? $2.16. She was very nice, Kelly. By the way, the only ones I call internationally is MCI. They're in Ontario. you're going to believe it. You remember this? I read you this on uh, May 20th, 10 days before Memorial Day. And this is Kathy Catterson. She's the chief clerk of the United States Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit in San Francisco. Uh, she was sued. She was sent a notice, a motion for default judgment against her. She sends it back to us, remember? And she makes believe, is that say Ninth Circuit? No, it's a Seventh Circuit. And she makes believe uh, that Glendora is filing a paper in the appeals court for the Ninth Circuit. It says Seventh Circuit. What it is is a notice of motion that she's in default. And is she going to defend herself or isn't it? Okay, that went out to her, right? And I read it to you. And I pointed out, you know, what she'd done and the laws that she had broken. 
uh, this one right here, for instance, uh, RICO, and uh, 1001, misrepresentation, right here, that one, 18 U.S. Code 1001, okay? Guess what she does? Again, she sends it back with another note on it saying Glendora needs to include the U.S. Court of Appeals docket number. We don't know what to do with this. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm a guest. This is not being filed in her court. And it has nothing to do with her U.S. Court of Appeals. It's a personal thing to her that she's been sued and she's in default. What are you going to do with this? Okay, pack it up again. And send out another one, but this time... Send it to her boss. And her boss is Schroeder, and I believe she's related somehow to the Kennedys. And you get another big envelope. Okay, another great big one, and another brand new one. And it says, D-Day. They died in vain, and still are dying in vain. Dear Chief Judge Schroeder, the clerk of your court cannot read. Glendora's paper says the Seventh Circuit. Why does Kathy Cattison read that as the Ninth Circuit? This notice of default is to her personally, not to the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit. Catterson stoops to any dull, obtuse, stupid to trick to keep from answering the lawsuit filed against her. She has committed these frauds at least eight times. Look how she lies on the post-it. 18 U.S. Code Section 1001 and 18 U.S. Code Section 1941 RICO. See also the admonition mailed to her around Memorial Day, and she is trying to censor the record. 18 U.S. Code, Section 1517, Glendora. And on the back, we put the poster. Now, this is for everybody to see on the poster trail from New York to San Francisco, California. Hokey smokes. But regardless of that, we are going to adhere. We're going to cleave and cling. And we're going to be united with, and we're going to be attached to, and we're going to hold, and we're going to be devoted to, and we're going to give our support by acts of aid. To what? To what, people? to what is good. We rejoice at a new morning. It's so fresh. And the birdies are out singing. And so we feed the birdies. Now, I think they'll, they'll have that all cleaned up within, oh, half an hour. 14 jobs came in the in mail this week and uh, seven are done. Uh, one of these is very valuable to you. It's from uh, Henry Harold Williams and it's about juries, how uh, judges take away from juries their power to decide the uh, law and the facts. And Here's another 1-800-TELL-JURY. You can help. Uh, just phone or write Don, D-O-I-G, or Larry Dodge at uh, F-J, F-I-J-A, which stands for something with juries. Uh,
Fully Informed Jury Association. Studies generally indicate that the jury is unique among institutions of government, generally conscientious and free of outside free of consideration of greed, politics, corruption, ambition, or malice. Wouldn't that be nice if that was true? And that's not free. It is laden with all of those. No social institution functions perfectly, but the jury clearly uh, outshines any conceivable alternative for the jobs it must do. What is going on right now? Much uh, fully informed form jury association legislation is being pursued in several states, while in others people are gearing up to put it on the ballot by way of citizen initiative. Fully Informed Jury Association as an organization backs and promotes all of the above. We also call for other jury system reforms. So I think this is something that you should know about because if there's one thing that uh, uh, ruins people, uh, it's the misuse of juries by judges. It's 5.30 and it's Saturday and every other Saturday we edit. So let the editing start now at 5.30. She gave a copy each to Dixon, Natalia, and Kleinbaum. With hostility, Dixon said, Remember, don't let anything come between us. Stay together. An adventure is an undertaking in which hazards are to be met and the issue hangs on unforeseen circumstances. I didn't take a picture of the editing last night before it was put away, but I can't, I don't know whether I ever did more than this, than was done yesterday. 19 editions. Now, Nasty Natalia and Bully Dixon were the cause of at least 10 of those. And 15 and a half hours. Fifteen and a half hours is a whole waking day. Sixteen hours is a waking day. A half an hour was to get up and brush the teeth and get washed and get dressed, but the rest of it was editing. Nineteen half-hour shows, but it is up to date. And I should have taken a picture of it for you. I am an... I am a videographer who is far from perfect. I must do better. Let's set out on the adventure. The lunch is packed. And the jobs to be done, their folders are ready. The bag is ready. So let's load the car, get dressed, and go. What do you think of that, folks? What do you think of that? Nobody protects us. Where is our government on this? It's our government, I guess, who's making it so impossible.
drive on a parkway and we park on a driveway. Lake Taconic State Park. Town of Clavera. Galaxy. The universe.
McDermott and Secret Justice Productions proudly presents to you a chat with Glendora, America's champion on First Amendment rights and pro se litigants' rights. We will be right back with our first segment. Welcome back, folks. We'll be going to a chat with Glendora, who will take us on a pictorial tour of our nation's courts as she outlines her complaint against Marvin J. Garbage, 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 for denying her due process rights and those of people of America to stand strong for the principles that undergird our rights liberties and the pursuit of happiness we pray when citizens observe how this senate conducts fully informed jury association i think you should know about this uh things are not good with juries here's a telephone number for you 1-800-TELL-JURY they're located in the uh, Michigan. Oh, remember that the jury has more power than anybody else in the courtroom. The law doesn't require that you be fully informed of your rights as a juror, so let us inform you right now. Uh, the judge is wrong to say that you may consider only the facts and don't let him kid you. You must use your conscience, your opinion of the law, and you must be uh, cognizant of the motives of the defendant. People don't get fair tri trials. I know that Franklin and I did not. Uh, when a Pinkerton uh, Bruce Ken beat us up uh, in the courthouse, the federal courthouse, in Long Island and then he lied that uh, we attacked him and his attack turned out to be that uh, Glendora's arm accidentally touched his when he attacked her and inflicted so many bruises. Something is obviously wrong with the jury system when uh, this happens, when jurors cry and hug the convicted person saying, we didn't really want to find you guilty, but the judge said we had to convict if the evidence showed you broke the law as it was explained to us. So why don't judges tell juries about this? Well, they want the power. Today's judges generally don't seem to want ordinary citizens to make decisions about the law. Well, that's against the law, especially common sense decisions, even if it, it is their uh, country. They appear to have forgotten that they are supposed to serve merely as judges are to serve merely as referees of courtroom disputes, and juries are to decide the law and the facts. And the judges are not telling it the way it's supposed to be. When a judge tells a jury it may not allow conscience, opinion of the law, or the defendant's motives to influence the verdict, the judge is lying. Good for you. Now, what's the name of this uh, fully informed jury? Fully informed jury association. I'm all for this. Their number is 1-800-TELL-JURY, non-profit. Now may the peace, the love, and the generosity of God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be yours, now and forevermore.
Adam talking to Rod? No, go ahead. And Adam says, God, how come you made Eve? And God says, well, I thought you were lonesome. And Adam says, well, God, how come you made her so beautiful? And God says, well, so you would like her. And Adam says, well, God, how come you made her so dumb? And God said, so she would like you. <laughs> I was afraid it was going to come out something like that. <laughs> that's, that's probably true for my husband. <laughs> okay, good talking to you, Glendora. I'm sure we'll talk again. Yes. Just give me a shout. Yes. Bye. Bye, Ed. Ed Cudahy, Buffalo News. Six hours that Glendora has ever spent. Inside of this envelope are summonses prepared by Glendora in the United States District Court for the District of Nebraska. Summonses on 38 judges and clerks who betrayed America, who tried to rob you of America. And George McDermott is going to serve uh, these summonses uh, when they arrive. Six hours work, $24. Print, post, and what else? So it's going to make George McDermott happy too because he will be serving Marvin Garbus. Leg. L-E-G-G. -G. Bennett. 